Good evening, curious people. Welcome to the Jade Starlit Forest and my early review on the area. My first impressions, the pre-release version. The embargo has been lifted, which means I can finally talk about the place. But as you can imagine, take everything with a grain of salt and full disclosure, it's not yet out, which means over the coming weeks, I'm sure this area will get slightly changed or buffed or whatever. This is where the area is on the map, for those of you who didn't unlock the full map yet, and also where the rotation that I used is located, with the three different towers, or three packs. I'm sure officially you're gonna need four or maybe five packs for those of you who grind faster, but I will leave official rotations for the official release. The server that I'm playing on obviously is empty, so I had no issues picking whatever towers I wanted. Mechanically, this area is pretty unique, but also pretty simple. I would compare it to Turo's, since that's pretty much the main purpose why you're gonna come here, for the flame, for the helmet. The monsters are split in two different types, you have the normal ones with the red name, and the slightly elite versions with the blue name on top of them. They are also split in three different sizes, you have the big winter keeper, then you have the medium sized yeti, the lamp, keeper and the small boys the brazier keepers. Why am I pointing that out? Because the bigger they are, the more trash they drop, and the bigger they are, the slower they die. Essentially, they are tankier and they drop more trash. Each pack or each flag only has a couple of monsters, so mob density is very low, but they are very tanky, and the blue elite versions spawn sometimes. I would say it's a 50-50 chance. Once you kill the normal monsters from one of the towers, there is a 50-50 chance the next wave, the next spawn on that same position will be with the blue versions. My advice, don't wait for the spawn animation, just move on to the next pack and when you come back you can kill the blue ones. Since they are tankier and they take longer to kill, I tried at some point during my hours to drag them from their original pack into a different one to obviously kill multiple monsters at a time, but I should warn you that's probably not a good idea. Let's talk about the statues, the mini totems in the middle of the groups. There are also three different versions, just like the names of the monsters. You have the lamp, let's call them statues, the lamp statue, which when it dies, it drops bombs at random around it for a couple of seconds. This one, I don't know if, the, if it does any relevant damage, I didn't notice anything out of it, but that's the effect. Then you have the brazier, which after it's killed, it makes a circle of fire around it, which has the effect of giving you a slight AP buff, but also a DP debuff, and this DP debuff also applies to the monster. And then you have the totem, which after it dies, it makes a smoke effect, which I have no idea what exactly it does, but there you go, the three types of totems. Why is it a bad idea to drag the blue monsters from one pack to another? Because this can happen with the red message on the screen. They apparently don't exactly like to be mismatched, and if that happens, they become way tankier, they don't really want to die, and they deal more damage, and that's how I died once. Since then, I I stopped dragging them from one pack to another, and I should say, officially, I'm sure that's not even viable because on the official servers you will grind faster than I did. Why is that? Because I was given only one class on this account, which is the New Darkania class. Really good, really amazing, obviously, but I didn't master it yet, so there's room for improvement. And for a gear set, I don't have an awakening weapon, I'm sure that impacts my damage to some extent, and I don't have the proper lightstones or artifacts that I would want to use. All in all, I'm sure I will be grinding a bit faster when this area gets officially released, and this class is not polished, it kind of has low damage multipliers, I'm sure she will be buffed in the coming weeks. Damage wise, again they are comparable to Turo's, they are manageable on daytime, kind of annoying and deal quite a bit of damage on nighttime if you're not paying attention. Other than that, do take note, these monsters inflict floating damage if you want to stack that one. I do have maxed out knockdown resistance and I'm still getting CC'd if you can somehow max out floating. And for special mechanics, the monsters explode when they die. Basically that, that's about it, monsters explode when they die. 
And lastly, out of 6 hours, I only managed to spawn one of the Guardian mini event or bosses, whatever it is, seems to work similar to Ulutuka at 2 rolls. I'm sure it has b better drops than the normal monsters and it probably should spawn more often, but I only saw one. In terms of drops, as I already mentioned, you're coming here for the flame for the helmet, but the area also drops light stones if you want those, and I did get in 6 hours one of these weird items that has everything written in Korean, it's character bound, and I suppose that will be a nice surprise to figure out what it is used for. And finally, before we start talking about some numbers, I wanted to take a moment and enjoy the ambience here, because the soundtrack is really amazing. Wasn't that great? Are you in a happy mood now? Because I'm about to sour it. This is the result out of my 6 hours. I stored everything in that bank and at the first glance, as you can already notice, I didn't really get much. After placing everything in Excel, you could call this the conclusion with not even 200 million silver per hour profit, but let's be honest, this is not official. The unknown item, I have no idea what it's used for, I cannot even value it. I didn't value the lightstones or the artifacts. These two items, the Starlit, Jade Breath and the Essence of Insight, these two here are used for elixirs which are not yet released, they might be super valuable for, for all I know, and the ember, the embers used for the helmet, I value them at 20 million silver each, similar to the, the Turo's version, because I imagine the helmet will also be capped at 2 billion silver on the marketplace. That all being said, I mean, it's like Turo's, don't expect to make huge stonks here. I personally, as a prediction, believe 10,000-ish trash per hour will be what most people will achieve on a yellow loot scroll, I should have said, this is my baseline, yellow loot scroll and come a blessing. That's all I had for buffs. You might want to run 10th buff, who knows, but 10,000 you will probably be able to achieve with an optimal class on the official release, in which case it's maybe 300 million silver on yellow. I predict around 350. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. If you look at my trash per hour, the first hour was 5.5 thousand because I was still learning the, let's say, combo rotation on the new class, and after I got it down to some extent, it hovered around 6.5 or 7 thousand. Hour 4 was the best because I was constantly dragging the blue monsters, as I mentioned, from one pack to another until that stopped working and then I stopped doing it. I would say 7 thousand is still really bad. I've seen YouTube videos from Koreans and some people claim 10,000 trash on a blue loot scroll, so definitely on official release I will have to revisit this area. Regardless, as the last point for today, I have Agris efficiency. Uh, this account doesn't have the Agris journal completed, so Agris on this one is basically the same as the yellow loot scroll. I didn't grind a full hour, I just briefly looked into the efficiency. The small monsters are burning 36 points, the big ones 108, and the medium, the yetis, 72. With the blue version of the medium monsters, the yetis, even more points. So the bigger they are, the more 
points they burn and the blue versions burn even more points. All in all, I spent 15 minutes, I burned this amount of points, almost 8000, and I got this amount of trash, which results in this conclusion. Almost 11,000 trash, because remember, it's supposed to be better if you complete the journal and you use a blue loot scroll on top of that, like always. It's supposed to be around 30 something thousand points per hour using this fourth hour the 7.3 thousand for speed i'm sure again on the official release you might be burning 50 thousand points per hour if you grind at probably this speed regardless this number here doesn't change and i'm sure it's not quite perfect because I didn't grind a full hour, but it is more or less the same as two rows. In fact, it looks to be a bit more efficient than two rows, but I'm pretty sure in the end it will be the same. Long story short, it's really good. You can use Agris here, and I will leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching, hope this was helpful, have fun grinding, and uh, I will see you next time with a different area, a different pre-release first impressions review. Bye bye!